14 babies are quarantined at home this morning in Santa Monica, California. Their daycare inside a high school is shut down. One infant there tested positive for the measles. The full vaccination cannot be given until babies are one year old. So there are fears other children may be infected. Dr. Holly Phillips joins us now. Good morning. Good morning, Charlie. I just want you to help us understand all this. And sure. you have all so many people waiting in, and especially about the concerns over autism and vaccines. Sure, you know, uh, well, really a 1998 study sparked a lot of those concerns and really fanned the flames. It was published in the journal Lancet. It involved only 12, 12 patients, so it was a very, very small study, and it was subsequently completely discredited and actually formally retracted by the journal, uh, in part because some of the uh, information and data was fraudulent or misrepresentative. Um, so and since the doctor was stripped of his license. He was as well. And since then, we have more than 20 studies involving millions of children, several countries, uh, really proving that there is not a link. So, so what much gives it life? So, yeah. You know, I, I think what gives it life is that until we have a very clear and succinct understanding of what does cause autism, parents are reluctant to let go of the idea of what doesn't. I think parents just want to feel as though they're doing something to protect their kids. Isn't it something kids. more than that? I mean, isn't it something more than people continuing this idea in public that vaccinations are not safe when all of the evidence all of the evidence suggests that vaccines are safe. And in fact, one of the best um, inventions of the 21st century, the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Rand Paul said yesterday that he's heard of many tragic cases of walking, talking, normal children who wound up with profound mental disorders after vaccines. Have you heard that? Uh, you know, there really isn't a great amount of evidence to show that, but actually what you're describing is something we call confirmation bias within, you know, within science, within the medical community. It's where when people have a very emotional understanding of, a, of an idea or, or of a you know, or, or when, when things are emotionally or politically charged, they interpret data in the way that they want to. They see data in the way that they want to, and they yeah. run with anecdotes in that specific way. Um, so it's something we try and balance in science. Yeah, people have very strong opinions. Thank you, Holly. Sure.